Charles Fernandez, Foreign Affairs Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure and honor on behalf of Excellency Mr. Walid Taha, the Ambassador of Antigua and Barbuda to Iraq, to welcome you all here on this occasion. <coughs> Presenting investment opportunities in Antigua and Barbuda, I will not be long in this quick speech, thanking everybody to make, to make it happen in this weather. <coughs> Welcoming you all, we will show a short film showing the investment in Antigua and Barbuda, which is self-explanatory. Uh, At the heart of the Caribbean, cushioned by white sandy shores and surrounded by pure crystalline waters, a secret paradise awaits you. Join us on a journey through this enchanting paradise. Twin Island Jewel, where world-class hospitality comes with boundless natural beauty. Discover the Caribbean's best hidden treasure. Dive in and discover Antigua and Barbuda. Enjoy the spectacular landscape as it unfolds before you from high above the warm Caribbean Sea. Gentle rolling limestone hills covered with lush acacias and mahogany lead down to coves and lagoons and onto 365 beautiful beaches. A different beach for every day of the year. Barbuda is an eco-lover's paradise where long pink and sandy white beaches are protected by impressive barrier reefs, keeping you as secluded and untouched as the island's beauty. Just as Antigua and Barbuda's beauty will capture your imagination, its history will also enthrall you. From early natives, through Christopher Columbus and recent British influence, these islands are a truly unique place where past and present meet harmoniously at every corner. cliff-top forts and 18th century harbours, to plantations and historic windmills. Antigua's rich history as a gateway to the West Indies is only part of its allure. Antigua and Barbuda special family holidays, romantic getaways, weddings and honeymoons, the wide variety This traditional
Antigua's central location at the crossroads of the Caribbean lends itself to accessibility, making this tropical haven one of the world's most desirable destinations, not only for tourism, but also for high-level business and investment. I take this opportunity as Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda to invite everyone to visit our shores. If you want to come here to have a delightful vacation, if you'd like to invest in a safe and secure environment, then Antigua and Barbuda is the place to be. Paradise awaits you. As Antigua's economy grows, incredible modernization is underway. Both port and airport expansions are currently in progress. Large-scale real estate developments will continue to raise the country's profile. Antigua and Barbuda welcomes travelers and tourists to our beautiful shores. You can be assured of a very unique and breathtaking experience. Driving this economic surge are progressive incentive programs generating foreign investment. Providing investors with all the perks of being Antiguan, including freedom from capital gains and inheritance tax, and unrestricted visa access to the Schengen area, the UK, Canada and several other countries. Antigua's Citizenship by Investment programme takes only 90 days to complete and is readily accessible via investment in real estate or business. Although tourism accounts for most of the nation's GDP, several other thriving industries like telecommunications, banking and agriculture are well established and poised to grow. As a centre of technological excellence, Antigua is an ideal base for high-tech services and internet-driven businesses that demand sophisticated operations. The financial services sector is also well established in Antigua, with several international institutions operating from this small island. Attractive for investors from all over the world seeking private banking services, Antigua's sound financial regulatory environment and international banking facilities are second to none. In addition to offering a sovereign jurisdiction and tax-neutral environment, the island's convenient time zone accommodates same-day transactions with international markets. At the helm of the financial services industry is Global Bank of Commerce, or GBC the very first international fiduciary institution formed and licensed in Antigua over 30 years ago. Long trusted as the grandfather of international banking in the region, GBC meets the private banking and wealth management needs of personal and corporate clients from all over the world. Antiguan Barbuda is a little piece of paradise and it's an opportunity for you to enjoy not only a valued visit, but also a valued opportunity to Commerce Bank is a prime example of the ongoing strength and validity of Antigua's financial centre. Highlighting the diversity of opportunity, companies like Caribbean Alliance Insurance, the largest general insurer in Antigua, are further testament to the stability of the private sector on the island. Antigua is very central. Uh, you have direct flights to the United Kingdom and the USA. It is the home base of the regional airline. You have a friendly government who are always willing to talk to you and be helpful.
utilities provider. They are a partner in life. One of the world's most beautiful and secluded twin island nations, Antigua and Barbuda offer an extraordinary way of life. Whether seeking a luxurious romantic escape, a tranquil family holiday, or investment opportunities, come discover Antigua and Barbuda, where the beach is only the beginning. kindly invite His Excellency, uh, Prime Minister, to attend uh, for a short uh, whatever. Thank you very much, Mr. Master of Ceremony. I acknowledge our distinguished Foreign Minister, the Honorable Charles Fernandez. Ambassador Taha and his wife, and also our Honorary Council Marlene, and certainly our distinguished organizer, Mr. Alex Arani, other organizing members of this conference, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, global citizens, good afternoon. It is certainly a pleasure to be here this afternoon in Dubai once again, even though the weather is not the best today, but again, Dubai is a great place to be. And I have to say that in Antigua and Barbuda, we admire the development here in Dubai in many ways, and we're hoping that we could replicate some of the successes here in Dubai with the help of a number of investors here, including those of you who are present at this forum. But let me also extend greetings on behalf of the government and people of Antigua and Barbuda, and also to thank the organizers for putting together this investor forum, certainly very important in terms of us attracting additional investments to our country. We believe strongly that in order to ensure that there is robust growth and development in our country, that we must continue to increase trade and to attract significant investments. Now you'd have seen the promotional video which would have given you some information about Antigua and Barbuda to include the climate, the physical infrastructure, and I believe you'll conclude that Antigua and Barbuda easily is one of the best tourism and investment destinations in the world. And I would add here too that the country has been voted by several publications as one of the finest tourism and invest investment destinations in the Caribbean. So clearly, Antigua and Barbuda would provide you with the necessary infrastructure to support your investment in a safe and secure environment. In fact, as global citizens, we all, we all have aspirations for a good life. We have aspirations for a good life that is characterized by wealth, good health, to operate in an environment of peace and stability, and certainly to have leisure. Now clearly, there are many countries that are successful but may have certain deficiencies. Some countries may be wealthy but may not necessarily have the best climate. Some may operate in a, an area of instability. However, Antigua and Barbuda is operating within a zone of peace within the Caribbean, and it's an area that is easily one of the most stable areas in the world. And in terms of our natural attributes, our climate, it's one of the best climates that you could find anywhere in the world. There, there are no extreme temperatures, and the prevailing winds there allow for sailing. You can literally sea bathe practically every day of the year barring sometimes we have cyclones, but not very often. Uh, so again, a very welcoming environment and climate that you could enjoy all year round and to enjoy a good standard of living. Now in terms of the physical infrastructure of the country, 
As indicated in the video, we have an international airport in which there are air links to the major capitals of the world, to include the United Kingdom, the US, Canada, and we also have a well-developed property rights system in Antigua and Barbuda. In fact, our jurisprudence is based on the British jurisprudence. We have investor protection programs. We also have double taxation treaties with several countries, including the United Kingdom. Uh, so again, we have a well-developed infrastructure to facilitate investments. In fact, I'll say that Antigua and Barbuda has many attributes, uh, attributes that will contribute towards a standard of living that is second to none. Uh, we have beautiful climate, we have the supporting infrastructure in terms of the airport, the seaport, uh, even in terms of healthcare and education. Uh, we have the Mount St. John Hospital, which is one of the finest within the region, and we continue to develop that facility to make sure that we could offer our people, uh, both uh, uh, locals and uh, visitors alike, with the opportunity for first, first world standards of healthcare. And we're now in the process of um, establishing the University of Antigua and Barbuda. Uh, so clearly, the social infrastructure is there, the physical infrastructure is there. We have the climate to support a good standard of living. Uh, what we are really deficient, is, deficient in is the capital. And that is why we're here today to uh, encourage you to invest in our country, to uh, show you that there are opportunities to be exploited. There are many on the exploited opportunities, and uh, in some instances, unexploited opportunities, and what is required is a capital to develop those areas. Now, our primary area of interest is the area of tourism and financial services. Uh, tourism, we have been competing in tourism globally for several decades, and have been able to hold our own in that um, particular sector. Uh, presently, we have about 3,500 rooms, and it is the goal of my government to double the room count within the next uh, five years uh, to take it from 3,500 to about 7,000 rooms. Uh, the demand is there for the product, but the limiting factor is attracting the, the investments to build the rooms in order to support the increase in airlift. And uh, clearly, we need more rooms, we need more investments, and uh, we have the infrastructure to support that type of investment in the uh, tourism sector. Uh, one of the uh, facilities that we have recently embarked upon is a, an economic citizenship program, one in which you can invest in the country and become a citizen of the country. And I want to make it uh, clear that our citizenship program is based on attracting high net worth individuals, individuals who can make a difference, a positive difference in the lives of the people of Antigua and Barbuda. And individuals who evidently will be able to continue to grow their wealth or preserve their wealth for that matter. And real estate is one of the best areas investments in the country uh, in that real estate prices have been extremely stable uh, for many decades. In fact, we have not had any situation in which there has been a reduction in real estate prices. In fact, over the years, over the centuries, we've seen a constant increase in real estate prices. So it is one of the most secured um, ways of actually preserving your wealth or growing your wealth. In fact, we have estimated that real estate in the country today is undervalued by about 30%. So should you embark on, let's say, a second home in Antigua and Barbuda, a vacation home, or if you wish to uh, pursue a tourism investment property, we can guarantee you that after construction of such a property that you will have at least a 30% appreciation in value. And we have um, no inheritance um, taxes, um, in fact, invariably, we waive all taxes for investors, including uh, corporation taxes, up to 25 years, depending on the size of the investment. We also allow for the uh, duty-free importation of um, all building material for the project and capital equipment. And individuals who become economic citizens in Antigua and Barbuda, they're actually exempt from the payment of personal income tax. And it doesn't matter where your income emanates from if it's locally or if it's internationally, uh, your income is actually exempt from the payment of personal income tax. Uh, so in essence, your gross income is net income. And it also provides a tax shield in many instances, especially where there's a double taxation treaty in which you can literally, um, let's say, manage 
um, your tax liability or keep your tax liability to a minimum. And becoming a citizen of Antigua and Barbuda as well uh, is good, not only that you will enjoy the physical attributes of the country, but our people are very friendly, very warm, very embracing. In fact, uh, Antigua and Barbuda is perhaps one of the most open economies in the Caribbean. Uh, we have a multicultural society. We consider Antigua and Barbuda to be a melting pot of different cultures. We have many individuals from the Middle East uh, living there, individuals from North America, Europe, Asia. So it is truly a melting pot. And today, in excess of 50% of our country's population uh, comprise of immigrants, just as the case here uh, in Dubai. Uh, but we have a situation in which our people have embraced immigrants in a railway so that they feel like belongers, not non-belongers. And that is one of the true attributes as well of Antigua and Barbuda, in that um, upon becoming a citizen of Antigua and Barbuda, or even a resident for that matter, uh, you will be totally embraced by the people of Antigua and Barbuda. We also have a residency program as well. And that residency program, for a small fee of $20,000, um, you can enjoy res residency in the country. Uh, the citizenship program, on the other hand, there are actually three pathways to become a citizen. Uh, the first um, pathway is a contribution of $200,000 to a national development fund. And the uh, supporting fees of $50,000, processing fees of $50,000 uh, for a family, a family of four. Uh, in addition, you can become a citizen of Antigua and Barbuda by investing in real estate valued at least 400,000 United States dollars. And the third area is as an investor, investing at least 1.5 million US dollars in a project. So those are the three pathways. And our program is a well-managed program. It is rated as one of the best investments, uh, citizenship by investment program in the world. Uh, in fact, I understand we are now ranked within the top five in the world. Uh, would have surpassed many of our Caribbean um, competitors. And um, we are aware too that some of our Caribbean competitors have had some issues with their program. And um, we have been very, very assertive in terms of the management of our program to maintain the integrity of the program uh, so that we have a number of safeguards in place. Uh, for example, it is the cabinet collectively that is responsible for our CIP program and not a single individual. In addition, we have certain safeguards in place in terms of our due diligence um, process. In fact, I can assure you there are at least two levels of due diligence that are conducted to make sure that we attract only the best, the creme de la creme of investors to our country. And the program generally is well administered and uh, well respected throughout the region and internationally. So you can be assured that becoming a citizen of Antigua and Barbuda, the possibility of um, any, um, I'd say, um, unlikely or mismanagement or corrupt practices emanating from that program is unlikely uh, because of our determination to ensure that we have a well-regulated program. And over, over, overall, we believe in good governance. We believe that good governance makes good business. And uh, we continue to make sure that we run a very transparent government. In fact, we have set a very impressive vision of transforming Antigua and Barbuda into an economic powerhouse in the Caribbean. And I know that there are many who felt that um, perhaps it would have been an impossible task, but I can assure you that we are well on our way. Uh, within our first few months of attaining the governance of the country, we have actually had in excess of three billion United States dollars in investment pledges. And many of those um, projects will commence later this year, early next year. And we continue to get serious interest in the uh, development of the country. Also, we have been utilizing our creativity as a government to exploit other opportunities. Uh, for example, we recently got the government of Venezuela to agree to make available to Antigua and Barbuda and other countries uh, within the OECS an oil field for us to develop so that, in essence, we, be, we could become, let's say, uh, an oil-producing country without having oil. I mean, these are some of the creative things that my government is actually doing uh, in order to ensure that we increase revenues, um, ensure that we provide opportunities for people, and in, in essence, to make Antigua and Barbuda a more significant player globally. 
just yesterday, we closed a deal in which we acquired the lone petrol distribution facility on the island. And um, again, you know, we were able to engineer it in such a way in which the people of Antigua and Barbuda will benefit immensely. So we also uh, believe in empowering our people, and um, we also believe in um, having an egalitarian government to uplift all the people and to ensure that we have a unified nation and one in which we'll respect all the people, all residents, all citizens, and to ensure that we work collectively for the advancement of the country. So I want to take this opportunity today to invite you to become a citizen of Antigua and Barbuda, or a resident if you so desire, and also to invest in our country. I also take this opportunity to assure you that in terms of um, the infrastructure that we have in place and the um, possibility for profits, that it will easily be one of the best investments you would have made, and that you can be assured that Antigua and Barbuda will provide you uh, the opportunity to have an integrated investment product, uh, one in which you could become a citizen, at the same time investing in different sectors of the economy, to include real estate, one in which we could provide you with the opportunity for your own wealth management, possibly extending a license for you to own an offshore bank so you can preside over your own personal wealth management. Uh, if you're the owner of a yacht or a private plane, we can also provide you with the opportunity uh, to register your yacht um, locally as part of our international um, merchant shipping registry. And incidentally, we have the uh, second largest merchant shipping business in the Caribbean, and we are within the top 10 in the world in terms of merchant shipping. So again, a small island, but with big possibilities, and we require additional investments. We need people like you to partner with us in order to achieve that very lofty objective of transforming Antigua and Barbuda into an economic powerhouse. So, again, we invite you to paradise. And I thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for your comprehensive word. Um, I kindly invite now uh, Honorable uh, Mr. Uh, Charles Fernandez for. Thank you, Ambassador Taha, Honorary Consul Madeleine, Mr. Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, Honorable Gaston Brown. There's not much to say after the Prime Minister has said so much about Antigua and Barbuda. Um, just to reiterate that uh, it's a small island with a lot of possibilities and we are looking forward to investments that will uh, enrich the uh, people of Antigua and Barbuda. And at the same time, I think it will uh, be safe to say that, as the Prime Minister pointed out, it's a safe investment for, for uh, anyone at this point in time. Uh, within the last, the last nine months of which our government has come to office, we have managed to curtail crime, which is very important. And I think uh, the statistics show that we have reduced crime by about 50%. Um, as you know, uh, we, it's important to have a safe environment to, uh, as a second home and as an investment. So crime is down. Um, the confidence of the people and the business community is at a very high level. So everything is uh, in place. We have uh, embarked on a very ambitious program in terms of our infrastructure, our road program, and, and um, our schools. And um, I think that uh, definitely Antigua is on the move. Um, as you know also, Antigua is small um, and independent, but we just won a case against the United States government, the WTO, and, uh, which is worth over 150 million US. We are presently looking to negotiate a settlement. But it goes to show that uh, Antigua is very independent and prepared to stand up for what it believes in. So again, we're a small island. We have a lot of potential, as the Prime Minister said. And I want to thank you all for coming here this afternoon. And um, I can assure you that uh, once you come to Antigua, uh, you'll fall in love with it, whether or not you invest in it. But even more so, if you invest in it, it will be a, a worthwhile investment that will pay dividends for you uh, in the foreseeable future. Once again, thank you for coming. Thank you.
Thank you, sir. Uh, I want to thank you all also for coming here despite the bad weather. And this uh, shows the commitment and the eagerness. I will leave, uh, I mean, the questions or open discussion for anybody who wants to raise any question uh, to start negotiation on different matters. And uh... Hello, uh, my name is Arif Hafiz. Um, I have a, a business uh, group over here. Um, I am from the United States, but we have a lot of business in Africa and part of Russia. Kyrgyzstan, Azerbaijan, Moscow. Uh, we operate primarily uh, airport duty-free shops in several airports and seaports. Also, we have hotels, oil and gas, um, several investments, portfolios. Um, what I want to know um, is what kind of banks operate in, uh, in Antigua? And I was actually in um, uh, Guatemala just a month, two and a half months ago. Um, it's not so far away from uh, Antigua. Um, so uh, the, the language spoken there is, is, is English or is, is, uh, is English? Yeah, so, okay. Um, banks, you have international banks operating there. And uh, airport, how big is the airport? And I'd be interested in, uh, in pursuing the duty-free options. Thank you very much <clears throat> for your questions. Uh, and just to confirm that Antigua and Barbuda is an English-speaking nation, actually a former colony of the United Kingdom. And we became independent um, in 1981, November 1st, 1981. So we are a sovereign, independent nation. Uh, insofar as the banks are concerned, we have two regulatory regimes. Uh, we have a, an offshore financial services sector that is governed by the Financial Service Regulatory Commission, and that covers our offshore banks. Now, those banks are precluded from doing business onshore on island. And we also have the domestic banks, which include at least three international banks. We have Bank of Nova Scotia, CIBC, as well as um, our Royal Bank, RBTT Royal Bank. So, and by the way, those banks have been on the island for at least 150 years, at least in the case of Scotia and the Royal Bank of Canada. So they are uh, uh, well established um, within the, the island, within the sector. And we also have several other indigenous banking institutions uh, to include um, ECAB, um, ABIB, Antigua Commercial Bank, and um, CUB, which is Caribbean Union Bank. So we have a very sophisticated and well-developed um, banking system. In fact, there's some who believe that we are overbanked, and steps are now being taken to at least consolidate some of the domestic banks to make them stronger. Uh, the airport, uh, we just are just about to conclude the construction of our new terminal, and it is actually scheduled to open in June of this year, uh, no later than, I'd say, mid-July. Uh, it's one of the most modern airports within the Caribbean today with jet bridges. Uh, very modern facility in the security systems. They're actually better than in many developed countries. And um, I'm not quite sure of the exact um, size of it in terms of um, the amount of square meters, but um, it is definitely um, you know, reasonably large for the island. Um, my best guess is probably in excess of 100 square meters. 100,000 square meters, sorry. Uh, and um, we have a number of shops. Where I know we have at least um, 40 shops within the airport. Uh, several of them are still available, so we can certainly accommodate your request for a duty-free store there. Uh, we can have further discussions and that. That is certainly an area that you could exploit. Uh, we already have a few international shops that have already um, committed their, or sent in their requests for proposals, and we have allocated um, a few of them already. So that is certainly an area that you, you could exploit. I know too that you're involved in oil and gas. 
So maybe we can explore that possibility of um, developing an oil field in Venezuela. The problem in Venezuela is that they do not have the capital to develop um, these oil fields. So whereas they have the largest reserve in the world of oil, uh, the production is below, um, let's say, the possible production capacity because of a lack of capital. And we have undertaken to uh, literally bring investors to the table who can help to develop um, these oil fields. Uh, Venezuela will benefit in the sense that they will get um, a royalty and um, the investor um, obviously will get a return. In fact, it's estimated in some instances that within about four or five years, they should be able to recover their capital and you know, turn a profit um, for some time. So that is an area in which we can match the um, supplier, or at least in this case, um, the owner of the um, oil field with an investor, which can create opportunities in the country of Venezuela. Antigua and Barbuda as well will um, get some benefit there, and the investor will be able to turn you know, a good return there. And uh, let me add here too that um, our airport can also accommodate um, a 380 um, Airbus. In fact, Concord, when it used to operate, um, landed there on several occasions. So it's an international airport by any standard. Yeah. One more question I uh, would like to add is um, <clears throat> taxation on repatriation of profits and capital. Is there any? Those will be waived. Should you invest in Antigua so, or if you become a citizen? Yes. There is they, no limit on repatriation? No limit. No. I mean, we understand that, look, when an investor invests in your country, uh, clearly they must be able to repatriate their profits. I mean, so there are no such capital restrictions. Okay. I want to ask how much is import duty on that? Finished goods? Import duty? Yes, we have import duties. In fact, that is our primary source of revenue. Uh, even though ABSD is actually payable at the front end when the goods are actually imported at the port. And um, the actual duty is 15% and the ABSD is 15%. So, and we also have a revenue recovery charge of 10%. So on average, imported goods, unless they're exempt, and we do have a number of exempt um, goods, they attract um, about 40% um, in taxes. Uh, but as I said before, if you're investing your capital equipment and um, everything that you require for your project will be exempt from the um, payment of those taxes. What facility you get for manufacturing over there? Manufacturing in England? Sorry, if there's... Manufacturing. A, a very small scale. Um, that is certainly an unexploited area, area of manufacturing. Uh, we happen to import 90% of what we consume, which is not really good. Even agriculture and fisheries, those are good areas. In fact, um, the country is really um, a, a tri-island state, three-island state in that there's also a small country which is only a half a square mile, uninhabited, by the name of Redonda. Uh, so it makes Antigua and Barbuda um, really an archipelago, which means that we have a relatively large exclusive zone, or economic zone. Uh, it's in excess of um, 200 nautical miles and um, potentially we could harvest about 10,000 tons of fish and fish products, but we're only harvesting probably about 2,000 tons, which cannot even satisfy domestic consumption. Uh, so that is an under-exploited area. Even the area of agriculture, poultry, in fact, we um, import at least uh, 25 million US dollars in poultry annually. Uh, but then again, it's an area in which uh, someone could actually embark upon um, to um, produce um, poultry locally. There's already market. And um, insofar as manufacturing is concerned, even um, textiles, um, you know, doing things at the hotels, um, those are ready markets that could be um, exploited, doing uniforms, etc. Yeah. One last question, Your, sure. Your Excellency. Uh, which countries other than Shenzhen are exempt from visas, arrival visas? Uh, Canada is one such country, so we exempt from 132 countries, uh, the entire Shenzhen region, as well as Canada, um, Singapore, United Hong States. Kong. USA? No, not the United States, um, but uh, generally speaking, um, citizens of Antigua and Barbuda are almost hassle-free would obtain a visa to get into the United States. Um, three questions I have regarding the GDP of the country, 
was not mentioned for the last uh, consecutive years. And uh, the second question is uh, regarding the public-private programs, partnership programs. Uh, actually, we invest in different countries uh, into that when it becomes to the government projects in terms of uh, developing an, um, IT solutions uh, or in constructions and facilities for the government. Is there any policy in uh, Antigua or is there any example of such projects there, public-private partnership? And the third question is, uh, uh, just two days back I have seen in the newspaper uh, an advertisement here locally about uh, the Antiguan passport that uh, if you buy a property here, then you are getting that passport. Uh, is this uh, through uh, the Antiguan government advertisement or what is the relation to that? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for your questions, um, Excellency. Uh, the GDP is about uh, 3.5 million EC dollars. Um, in US, um, that is just about 1.2 billion US dollars. Uh, yes, we have um, several private public partnerships. Uh, in fact, the deal that we concluded yesterday, in which we purchased the um, West Indies Oil Company, uh, we're about to partner now with the government of Venezuela. Uh, they will take um, a 25 stake in this entity. Uh, it actually, we transform it now into a petrol distribution hub for the Northern Caribbean. And um, we also partnering with a private entity out of um, Hong Kong. They too will own about 24%. And the government will remain the 50%, well, will remain our owners, our owner of the 51%. Um, yeah. Now, insofar as the real estate and the CIB program, uh, which has been a very controversial issue. Uh, we had entered into an agreement with a company by the name of um, Sweet Homes, which operate in um, Ajman. Uh, they have about 7,000 units that they are trying to sell, and we had appointed them as a supplier to our CIP program. And when I say a supplier, I mean the person is so eligible, they will recommend them to us, and then they will have to go through the normal due diligence, pay the 200,000 US dollars in order to become a citizen. Uh, for some reason, they had put up um, an ad, a billboard, I understand, suggesting that you could just buy a property here and become a citizen of Antigua and Barbuda. That is not the case, and we have asked them to correct it. Uh, so again, they have joined them when they really, what they should be doing here is to literally just recommend customers to us, and they will get a commission uh, what we have done is that we have agreed to pay them a commission of 10% uh, for each successful applicant. Uh, but I don't know if it was deliberate or probably got lost in the translation. The way it was done, it gave the impression that you could actually buy real estate here and get Antiguan citizenship. Now, the law is very clear. Uh, real estate here in Dubai or in any other country does not qualify for Antiguan passport. The real estate must be domiciled in Antiguan Barbuda. So... The law does not allow it in an event. So clearly that is an issue now that we're trying to resolve. So I hope I answered your question. Thank you. Hey, I don't know. I, I have a small, uh, because I have seen this newspaper, which is, as a matter of fact, he's putting 1.4 million dirhams for getting a villa in Ajman. But if you go into the law, as you, Your right. Excellency said, that $200,000, it is 700,000 dirhams. So it becomes the villa by 700,000 dirhams. It is very cheap, which may lead to thinking that this is a bogus, right. which, is, which is definitely using the name. I don't, I, with all my respect for the people, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is... Well, I don't we, we accept, and... Um we have actually asked them to address that issue. In fact, our CIP um, unit is actually working with them now to correct that, um, that problem. Uh, my understanding, though, is that they have heavily discounted the real estate. Um, I understand that the project should have been completed several years ago. Uh, they got stuck. And what they've done now is to discount the real estate part of it um, heavily in order to boost sales. Uh, but again, you know, whatever they do with their real estate, that is their business. But I mean, our program is very clear. It's enshrined in law, and there's no way it can be circumvented. How many? Passport. Who issued? 
zero. <laughs> and I have suspect too that the approach of Sweet Homes is, is bad and you know, you know, we'd have taken a reputational hit unnecessarily. Uh, I mean, they're doing this untargeted marketing or promotion which really is unhelpful because I imagine that maybe 90, 95% of the people who would have seen this ad, they're not even eligible, they do not have the wealth. I mean, clearly, I mean, we're looking for more uh, wealthy individuals, I mean, high-end individuals. And um, the initial thinking was that um, because they had so many units, they have about, what, 800 million US dollars tied up in real estate. And all we're looking for was a referral for commission. But um, again, they have gone national and um, there has been you know, a number of agents who have actually you know, expressed concerns, so it's an issue that we are presently resolving. Uh, Louis Meissen, in regard to obtaining the passport uh, by investing 1.5 million uh, into private or into uh, private and government, so my question is, the 1.5, in case if I'm investing in a service, this 1.5 million has to be as a paid capital and to be uh, uh, deposited to one of the banks or? Well, at least there must be some evidence. Um, the CIP unit would perhaps um, have you establish an escrow account so that a determination would be made that the money is there in the first instance and that there will be evidence that the funds were invested. And uh, I didn't get a chance to answer, uh, I missed another question I was asked about IT solutions. Um, uh, we actually have partnered with uh, Microsoft to introduce um, an e-government platform so that a lot of our services uh, will be basically driven by this uh, e-government platform. And that is an ongoing project as we speak. Is it signed? Signed already, ongoing project, yes, with Microsoft, yeah. Services. <laughs> you know, uh, a few decades ago, a few centuries ago, we exported sugar to Britain, uh, but we uh, primarily are a service industry. Uh, tourism contributes about 70% of GDP, and we have financial services. Uh, one of the areas that we had actually grown exponentially is the gaming sector, but we've had some issues in the United States in that um, they have this archaic um, legislation that precludes um, remote gambling, and they have actually incriminated a number of the operators. Now, remote gambling is not illegal in our country. It is not in illegal in most countries, but it happens to be illegal in the United States, and I have suspect that they are protecting their own, um, let's say, their own gaming operators. So we've had to take the issue to the World Trade Organization, and as the minister indicated um, during this presentation, uh, we won the, um, the case at the WTO, and uh, we got an award of 23 million US dollars per year. Now we have the right actually to, uh, I don't know if I should say pirate, uh, because it's really legitimate in the sense that it's sanctioned by the World Trade Organization, but we have a right to duplicate <coughs> US um, patents and copyrights to the tune of 23 million US dollars per year. But we had given the US some time to settle this issue. And um, while we're a new government, um, they are showing some goodwill here in that they have actually established a negotiating committee. But if perchance they refuse to settle and to settle on a timely basis, that in itself could probably become an opportunity for someone to exploit. <laughs> We do. Uh, in terms of cruise tourists, we have about 750,000 annually. Uh, by, I'd say within 24 months, we will hit a million. And um, overnight tourists, we have about a quarter million overnight tourists. Uh, so it's a sector that is growing. And in terms of investments, we have had some really interesting ones. I said to you, we've had in excess of $3 billion in investment pledges. Uh, you probably may have heard of Robert De Niro, the international um, f uh, film actor, uh, film star. Uh, he has 
partnered with uh, James Packer, who is an Australian billionaire, to do a major project, a 250 million US dollar project on Barbuda, our sister island, that was recently approved by the people of Barbuda. And um, construction will commence very shortly. Uh, in addition, we have a Chinese group by the name of Yid Investment. Uh, they just recently acquired um, 70 million US dollars worth of real estate on the island for development. And they expect to spend um, about 2 billion US dollars over a period of um, 10 years. And there are several other projects. Uh, in fact, uh, we seem to be getting more projects now um, than the availability of land to support the, or the land, the availability of land may not be, be able to support all those projects. <laughs> And but, however, we have Barbuda, which is um, unexploited. Uh, Barbuda has only 15 or 1,700 residents, and the island is 62 square miles. So it is actually littered with a lot of beaches, undeveloped beaches, and we're now emphasizing the development of Barbuda. And by the way, pink sand beaches. Uh, the beaches in Antigua and Barbuda have been voted among the best in the world. And we have at least 365 on Antigua. Uh, Barbuda has a few hundred beaches as well, or a couple hundred beaches minimum. Uh, we have, in fact, the same Dinor Dinero um, property. Um, there was a property there before by the name of K Club, and the late Princess Diana. Um, she, uh, from time to time, used to use it as, well, as one of her favorite, favorite um, you know, getaways. So again, it has some um, celebrity status. Any further questions? If you require a second home in Antigua too, again, good area to invest in. You can be assured of capital appreciation and um, you know, probably rent it when you're not um, using it. I mean, those are areas you can look at. And one of the good things with the CIP program as well is that you, know, you can utilize other people's capital to build these um, hotels, these um, real estate um, units. So those are opportunities that could be exploited. I wonder if there is any other questions before we end up. Uh, unfortunately, for the short of time, we couldn't make a, a CD for, uh, so we just want to know whoever is interested to have a CD for this presentation for Antigua and Barboda, we will be delighted to furnish them. And, uh, yeah, yes. Exactly, exactly. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Your Highness. Thank you, thank you, Your Excellencies.